Turn to the fifth chapter of the book of uh, Acts. Is what we're going to be reading from this morning. And I can say I thank God for another privilege to be here today. But you really pray for, for me. So sometimes God does lay messages upon the preacher's heart if he's obedient to God that he don't necessarily want to preach. I love to preach about the love of God, the mercies of God, and the blessings of God, and things like that. But we also don't want to preach a one-sided God. God loves us. God does. But God hates sin. Mm -hmm. And he'll judge sin in your life and in my life. And we'll pay the consequences of it. And so we need to be sure, be sure that we're uh, serving God and the knowledge that he does uh, forgive sin, but he will not be able to tolerate it. And sometimes, even though God forgives us for our sin, we still wind up paying the consequences of it. And that's the, been testified by lots and lots of people, things that they did back earlier years, maybe. And God forgave them of it, but they're still paying the consequences of it yet. And that's the uh, uh, way it is. But anyway, in, in chapter 5, that I'm about to read, at this point in time, the, in chapter 4, Paul uh, was writing about how that, uh, or Luke was writing about how that uh, all believers have everything in common. And the believers were, you know, trying to help one another. And they were bringing things that they had and selling them and giving it to the poor. I mean, they, that's what he meant by all things in common. They got it laid it on their hearts, and they were bringing these things to Peter and set and laying it at his feet, and this, that, and the other, and, you know, uh, uh, selling their possessions and things that they had, some selling land and other other things. And here in this chapter 5, it's the, the story that everybody's pretty familiar of. It's about Ananias and Sapphira, the two, uh, a man and his wife. But a certain man named Ananias, but Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also been private to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine power, own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Amen. And he said, And Ananias, bearing these words, fell down, gave up the ghost, and great fear came upon all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. In other words, he just dropped dead right then, right then and there when he told that lie. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered it to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carried her forth, murdered her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. Now, the Bible says here about, about Ananias and Sapphira. Well, now, what Peter was saying to Ananias, it was his land. He didn't have to sell it. Nobody made him sell it. And when he did sell it, he could have uh, uh, kept all of it if he wanted to. But he decided him and his wife didn't keep part of it, but they didn't want to tell nobody they did, you see. They just wanted everybody to think that they had uh, sold that land for such and such amount of money and was given every dime of it uh, to the cause that Peter uh, was talking about there, about the uh, 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 giving of the poor and distributing the goods out, this, that, and the other. But my friend, what the thought was this, they tried to keep it back. I mean, friend, it, it wouldn't have mattered at all if they had kept part of it, but it owned up to it. So I want us to look in this morning and talk about the thought, how will you die? How will you die? 
And we're going to look at some men and women in the, the, the Bible that died and how they died. I'm not talking this morning about dying of old age. I'm not talking about dying of cancer. I'm not talking about dying of a heart attack or anything like that. But how will you die before God? At church this morning when none of us knows when we're going to die as far as that goes. And brother, today all of us, if we had our way about it, we'd want to wait until the rapture will come and we wouldn't have to die. But brother and sister this morning, it boils down to the fact that the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 9, verse 5, it says, It's appointed unto men, uh, man, men wants to die, and after that, the judgment. So it's appointed to all to die. Even when the rapture occurs, we're going to die after this body that we've got and be changed into another body. <coughs> so let's look this morning and think about the fact, how will we die? I don't know about you, but if I die, my friend, this morning, I know I'm going to heaven. I'm not talking about losing your salvation or anything like that. That's settled in heaven, and you can't lose it. But I know one thing this morning, church, today, I, when I do die, I want to die in the will of God. I don't want to die outside God's will and stand before the judgment seat of Christ and how the Son of God said, Billy, you died outside of my will. Billy, you didn't preach that message that I told you to that Sunday. And friend, today, let's look at the most famous person, I guess, and that's that old rich man over the 16th chapter of the book of Luke. <coughs> well, the Bible tells us that he died over there. I mean, friend, listen. When we saw him read that story, we see that he was a rich man. The Bible said he found his fire sumptuously every day. And that old Lazarus sat outside his gate and a bagging and looking for some crumbs from the table, but he wouldn't give them to him. Friend, today that rich man probably had the most uh, fancy uh, funeral there ever was. He had the money, my friend, this morning to buy all, friend, today that he needed. But my Bible tells me, friend, that in hell he lifted his eyes. You see, church, today that man died unprepared to meet God. He died long. <coughs> I pray for us this morning. He died lost without God. But then the Bible goes on down and tell about old, old, old Lazarus. Friend, you look, read this story, and you'll find in this story a friend, how a rich man became a beggar, and how a beggar became a rich man. The Bible says that that rich man in hell lifted up his eyes, and he was a begging for just a drop of water from, old, from Lazarus, but he couldn't have it. Then the Bible tells me that Lazarus died. And it says the angels came for him. I don't know, my friend, this morning about the uh, the rich man. He, they, back then, they paid mourners and all. But friends, think about it. Oh, brother, today, he didn't have, uh, uh, Lazarus, my friend, this morning, had angels as his Paul buyer. I mean, friend, the Bible says he come down and Lazarus died and in heaven. He lifted up his eyes. That brother today was in Abraham's bosom. But brother today, listen, the rich man lost everything. He didn't take none of it with him. He died unprepared to meet God. But brother old Lazarus died prepared to meet God. No, friend, I'm not talking today about wanting to die or anything like that. I'm just asking how will you die? Brother, today, old Lazarus, my friend, died prepared to meet God. He might not have had a lot down here. He didn't have all the riches that that man had, all the sumptuous clothes he had. But, brother, today, he died prepared to meet God. And, friend, today... <coughs> That's what we need to be, prepared to meet God. I mean, friends, today, I'm not ready to die. I'm not wanting to die or anything like that, but I'm prepared to is what I'm talking about. Brother, today, I want to be obedient unto the Lord Jesus Christ. A friend, when Peter told her and her husband that they lied to the Holy Spirit, a friend, what was wrong in that? A friend, just like a lot of people today, 
there's a lot of church folks today that ain't prepared to be God. I mean, friendly sir, and nice as sapphire would have probably made good church members. They probably would have given a lot to the church. They may have been church members for all I know, but yet, my friend, this morning, they did die, they denied what they done, and they died unprepared to meet God. I mean, they were professing something that, that they had done something that they really didn't do. And brother, today, they held a profession that wasn't true. They said we gave it all, when really and truly they hadn't given it all. I don't know how much of it they kept, the Bible don't say, but brother, they kept part of it and lied about it. And friend, today, listen, I praise God this morning, he was professing about something he didn't do. He had a profession he didn't have. And brother, today, he died that way. Did he go to hell? I don't know. If he was saved, he didn't. But brother, he still died out of the will of God. He stood before God, him and his wife did. And God probably said, brother, today, you lied about it this morning. Oh, friend, today, the devil has dealt a lot of people a lie. He told them, my friend, this morning, uh, I'll just go to church and, and this, that, and the other. And as Herbie said, that old uh, social gospel, just go to church and give to the church and this, that, and the other, and everything will be all right. Uh, brother, you're a good person. You walk good. Uh, but brother, today, had a nice, as far as I know, him and his wife might have been popular in the community. I don't know. But uh, regardless of that, they died unprepared to meet God. And brothers, you look back in the Old Testament, a friend of day. Listen, the Bible says Enoch was a walk with God and God took him. Enoch didn't die. He, he just walked on in. Amen. And brother, you think about old Elijah over there. The Bible says he was took to heaven in a chair of fire. Glory to God today, friend. Listen, if we're prepared, glory to God, as Enoch and Elijah was, and the rapture occurs, we're leaving this world. World, and the brother today and won't die but glory to God today them two men that I just mentioned to you they obey God Ezekiel preaches or Elijah rather uh, preached messages that wasn't popular oh they have and Jezebel they, they tried to kill him and everything else because it wasn't popular glory to God today let me tell you something if a preacher or pastor whoever he is don't warn you about about sin, don't tell you sin's wrong, I don't ask you how you're going to die, but brother, why don't you get rid of him because he don't love you. I'll preach because I love you today. I want you to be prepared to meet God. I want you to be prepared to die. No, I cannot tell you the day to the hour. I have a friend today, if the Lord don't get there, his coming. It's a coming to all of us. One day after a while. I mean, I, I'm like Ralph Riley over there said a lot of times. He said he was prepared, but he wasn't ready. Amen. Well, I'm prepared, but I'm not ready. I mean, I ain't ready to go right now. Now, but I'm prepared to if he calls me, amen. Uh, brother, today, I don't want to die. I want to live a while. But brother, today, uh, brother, listen, like I said, if he called me right now, I'm as prepared as I know how to be. And friend, today, look at old, look at a fellow by the name of Stephen. The Bible said, listen, today, that they they stoned those Stephen the dead. Well, they just rocked him to sleep, didn't they? Because of my Bible tells me how that old Stephen stood up and brother, he said he seen Jesus standing at the right hand of God. That's the only place in the Bible before he comes again that you'll find him standing up. He's been sitting at the right hand of God. But brother, when they begin to stone his servant, brother, those Stephen, uh, Jesus Christ himself stood up. And I believe, brother, today he was saying, come on home, Stephen. It's time to go now. And old Paul, you remember, was standing there by him, uh, holding on to his coat. And friend, I believe Stephen's uh, death was part
Lord to watch all Paul and be converted. Because, friend, today uh, Stephen prayed like our Father, like our Lord Jesus Christ did. He prayed and said, Lord, don't tell a whole list of their charge. And, friend, he died. Uh, praise God, unafraid, didn't he? Oh, he just looked up and he saw Jesus. And Jesus, and I believe on Stephen, I said, Jesus, I'm coming home. He died unafraid today. Oh, I know death is a fearful thing. I'm not saying that. But, brother, today when the hour of death comes, we can die unafraid. There's a little bit of fear of death because it's the unknown. But hallelujah to God this morning, church, today. Hey, I, I, I'm not uh, afraid to. I mean, I don't want to die or anything like that. But then I want you to look at old Paul. Glory to God, Paul got his head chopped off. And he said, he said, what did he say? He said, I'm not ashamed. Old Paul said over in the book of Hebrews, he said, over there by departure, not my death. Paul didn't say, I'm going to go to sleep for a while. He didn't say, I'm going to be unconscious for a while, which is what some religions say. But Paul said, listen now, he said, my departure is at hand, but henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, but not for me only, but for those that love the Lord. Glory to God today. He said he wasn't ashamed of the gospel. He wasn't ashamed to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you think about it for just a minute. Uh, Paul suffered the most of any of them uh, of what he was here other than the Lord himself. I mean, they beat old Paul. <laughs> they tried to kill Paul and everything else. They finally did chop his head off. But brother, listen, uh, Paul said one time, he asked God to, to remove the thorn from his side. Uh, God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. And brother, today, it's still sufficient. Let me tell you something right now. Uh, God will give you the grace to live by. He'll give you the grace to die by. If you're right with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm like uh, Herbie said, surely was. Uh, surely I've seen enough death. I'm ready. I've seen enough death. And I've seen them go out here praising God like that. I've seen them do that. I've seen them go out with a smile on their face. But, brother, I've also seen them go out uh, screaming in the holler. I saw one in particular, my friend today, didn't want me to leave her bedside. Every time she she's backed up and was in that bed she could get, she said, get them snakes, get them spiders, get them off of it. And glory to God, my friend, today, she went out of this world like that. I don't want to go that way, you. I don't want to go that way. I want to go praising God. I want to go and say, Lord, I'm coming home now. I'm coming home now. Oh, folks, today, listen. We don't, don't, you don't have to die unprepared. What I'm talking about here this morning, I'm not that if you're sa uh, lost, you didn't get saved, but what I'm talking about this morning is Christians that are out of God's will. What would happen if they died? They would die out of the will of God. Yeah, they'd still go to heaven, but they'd stand before the seat, judgment seat of Christ and uh, uh, ashamed. I don't want to stand there like that. Brother and sister, this morning, when it comes to reward, the Bible speaks of rewards and crowns. I don't figure I've got to do <coughs> But glory to God today, I, I know one thing. I've got eternal life. Brother, listen today. Glory to God, they, uh, we, down here, uh, we have our borough insurance, and, and a lot of people have done already got their borough arrangements made and uh, paid for, and that's just fine. But are you, that's the uh, worldly body. What about that soul, that spiritual body? Brother, today, is it prepared? Is it ready? Is it a going? Glory to God today, folks, listen. We all see it and come show the glory of God. I know that. But friend, today, Ananias and Sapphire, they didn't have to sin. They done it sin willfully. I mean, friend, today, they didn't even have to sell that land. Nobody made them. But they wanted to look good for the church, you see. They wanted to get out and say, hey, look here what me and my husband did. We sold all this land and we're giving, uh, giving it to the, uh, uh, the church and all like that, you know. 
But listen, they could have done, done that, but also, friend, today, they didn't have to lie about how much of it they kept. But they did. That's what they lied about. They were pretending to do something they hadn't really done. Have you ever heard somebody tell, uh, people tell about, oh, boy, I give this and that to the church? Well, friend, today you better be careful with that person. I mean, my Bible have heard me tell me for me not let my left hand know what my right hands are doing. Yeah. I mean, friend, they make a big show of it, you know. But glory to God, uh, listen, I, uh, that's, that's, not, that's not right. I want to glorify God. If I've got a little bit to give, it's because God gave it to me. God gave me the ability to do it. And friend, today, listen, you think about old Moses. Glory to God today. He lived obedient to God. And listen, the Bible says when he went up on the, uh, Mount Pisgah, uh, praise God, that uh, he died. And I don't know what they say, but listen, the Bible also says over the book of Jude uh, that the devil or uh, uh, strive for uh, 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 Moses' body. But him and Gabriel did. I don't know what Moses is want, or the devil's want with Moses' body, but he wanted it for some reason. I don't know. But I ain't got speculation. But anyway, Moses died looking over into the promised land. Hallelujah to God. Listen, Canaan ain't heaven. I know that. But brother, today, every once in a while, and surely I get a glimpse of heaven. I get a glimpse of the promised land, heaven, and know that I'm going there. Oh, I don't know what it's going to be like to walk on streets that are paved with pure gold. I don't know what it's going to be like. I mean, you think about this. There's pearls and diamonds and things like that in the world, but you can hold most of them in your hand. My Bible said the gates of that thing is going to be made out of pearl. That's going to be a big one, ain't it? He said the walls are made out of jasper. And friend, today, I want to... I want to I want to go there. And friend, today, just as I was born into this world under the name of Franklin, I'm born again, brother, today under the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. And friend, today, I'm going home. Glory to God, today, if my funeral comes before uh, dark tonight, just say, Billy's gone home, because that's where I'm going. And how I want to, I'm as prepared, prepared as I not possibly know how to be. No, I'm not perfect. No, I make mistakes. I sin all like that. Oh, I got a father yonder in heaven awaiting me. I got a father that's awaiting for his children to come home. I got a father that tells me out of the book of Psalms over there, he says that the death of one of his saints is precious in the eyes of God. Do you know that? I mean, it ain't precious to us, but it is to God. Why? Another one of his children has made it home. Has made it home. Oh, I remember church the day when I was growing up. I'd be out somewhere in the, the, probably up in the woods or the barn loft or something, <laughs> and I'd go out, and Mom would say, Son, be back before dark or before supper. Hallelujah to God, I'm going to be home for supper time. I'm going to be home before dark. Because why? I'm prepared to go. Am I good enough? No, I ain't. But praise God, Jesus' blood took care of it. And I wonder this morning, if it comes your time right to time before this day's out, how will you die? How will you die? Will you die prepared to meet the Lord? Well, we stand for just a minute. Listen, I don't know why God wanted that preach this morning. I tried my best to get out of it. I'll admit that. I tried my best to come up with something else. And I asked God, I said, Lord, I don't want to preach this if you don't want me to. I don't want to preach this if it's what I want to preach. Show me something before preaching time comes. And you'll come hurt me along. So you blame it on her if you don't do it. You'll come hurt me along. Talking about death and dying. I said, all right, Lord. You feel like coming to the altar, we invite you to come this morning. There's something to bother you when you come. 
Anybody else got anything? 